Welcome to Energy and Temperature. In the upcoming lessons, we're going to be discussing the behavior of gases. And temperature is something that has a major impact on gases. So we're going to make sure that we really understand what temperature is. We'll start by defining temperature. Temperature measures the average kinetic energy. So clearly energy is somehow related to temperature. So we have to figure out what energy is before we can come back and really talk about what temperature means and what this average kinetic energy is. So what is energy? Energy is the ability to do work. Energy can come in many forms that we're probably familiar with. We have sound energy, we have electrical energy, we have radiant energy, which is the same as electromagnetic radiation, so that's x-rays, microwaves, radio waves, visible light, those are forms of energy. And there's many more. However, all these types of energy can be classified in two categories. Now, some are in both categories at the same time, but in general, we have two large categories of types of energy. We have kinetic energy, and we have potential energy. These are our two main types of energy, kinetic and potential. We're going to focus on kinetic, because that showed up in our temperature definition. And kinetic energy is the energy of motion, okay? the energy of movement. That's kinetic energy. So where does kinetic energy come from for what we're talking about? Well, atoms and molecules are always moving. So let's look at some molecules in here. So I have a mixture of different molecules in this sample, and all these molecules are moving around. Let's say this is a gas. So this one's moving that way, this one's moving that way. They're all kind of going off in random directions. So they clearly have motion. You can call this forward motion. Okay, they're moving from one place to another. They also move in other ways. For example, molecules can also vibrate in place, like in solids. But even gas molecules vibrate a little bit. They can also spin as they move through the air, kind of the way the baseball spins as it's thrown. And that's another kind of motion. All these things combined are the molecule's kinetic energy. And atoms and molecules are always moving, and they move quite a bit. You may not realize it, but the molecules in the air around you on a regular day are moving faster than a bullet shot from a rifle. So there's a lot of motion when we talk about atoms and molecules. Now you'll notice when I drew some of these motions in for these molecules, I gave some of them a lot of motion, and some of them only a little motion, and some in between. Each of these molecules has a different amount of kinetic energy. But the sample as a whole, if I consider all the molecules, their average kinetic energy gives me the temperature. And that's what it means to say temperature measures the average kinetic energy in a sample. So now that we've talked about what temperature is, let's talk about how we can measure it. And we could answer that simply by saying with a thermometer. But it's worth noting that there are different kinds of thermometers based on how you're measuring the temperature. Now, Weather reports here may give us degrees Fahrenheit, but we also have degrees Celsius as the metric unit. So the Celsius scale is a scale that measures temperature based on water. Well, how is it based on water? When the Celsius scale was set, they established that when water freezes, that temperature would be defined as zero degrees Celsius. And when water boils, that temperature would be defined as 100 degrees Celsius. Most of the measurements we take will be in Celsius because we typically use Celsius thermometers because it's a metric unit. So we're never going to use Fahrenheit in the lab. Celsius is the one to know. Let's talk about what these temperatures represent. We know that the zero is based on the freezing temperature and the 100 is based on the boiling temperature, but they measure kinetic energy. So zero should have less kinetic energy than 100. And we can go negative, right? We have negative temperatures. So we can keep getting lower and lower and lower. And lower and lower temperatures should have lower and lower kinetic energies. Now we should hit a point, theoretically, where the kinetic energy is zero. And the temperature where kinetic energy is zero, we call absolute zero. Now this is a theoretical temperature because we haven't been able to get to absolute zero. But based on overwhelming experimental evidence, we basically figured out that absolute zero should occur at negative 273.15 degrees Celsius.
Now, absolute zero is so cool, we actually made an entire scale based on it called the Kelvin scale. And expressing temperatures in Kelvin is going to be something very useful when we talk about gas laws. So the Kelvin scale is based on absolute zero. And basically, to convert to a Kelvin temperature, all you have to do is take the temperature in degrees Celsius and add 273 to get the Kelvin temperature. This is our conversion for converting Celsius temperature to Kelvin temperature. That wraps up energy and temperature. If you have any questions, write them down in your notes and bring them with you to class. Keep watching for more information on kinetic energy. So we've now talked about temperature and how to measure temperature. We've also defined temperature as the average kinetic energy in a sample. So now we're going to take a look at how we can define kinetic energy and what kinetic energy really is, besides just saying the energy of motion. So kinetic energy is given by the equation kinetic energy equals one-half mass times velocity. So m is mass, and v stands for velocity. Now to see how these things relate, we're going to look at some particles uh, in these little boxes. In these boxes, I'm going to draw in particles of the same substance. And the reason I'm going to do that is so that we know that there's equal mass in both of these. Okay, equal mass in both boxes. Because I have the same substance and the particles are all identical. Now let's say that the particles on the left are moving, but they're moving slower than the particles on the right. We can see that these guys are really zipping around. Now according to this equation, the kinetic energy in the box on the right should be higher because the mass is the same in both cases. But in this one, the velocity is greater. So this box should have more kinetic energy. And if the average kinetic energy of these molecules on the right is greater than the average kinetic energy of the molecules on the left, then the sample on the right has a higher temperature than the sample on the right. The key idea here is that the temperature or kinetic energy is related to the average speed of the molecules in the sample. So saying average implies that there is a range of kinetic energies or a range of molecular speeds in the sample. So we can represent that graphically with a distribution. Here's our graph. On the x-axis we have molecular speed of the molecule. and On the y-axis we have the percentage of molecules with that molecular speed. So we can label these axes. The x-axis is not important to label. We can use pretty much arbitrary units for that right now. Uh, but we can put the top here at 60% of the sample uh, for the percentage of molecules. If I look at the distribution of molecular speeds in this sample, I'm going to see a distribution curve that looks like this. This distribution curve shows that most of the molecular speeds are clumped down here in the low end, but I do have a small amount trailing off towards the high end of the molecular speeds. The most probable speed is at the top of this curve. That would be the mode. But that's not what we use to determine temperature. We're interested in the average molecular speed, which is closer to this point. And we call this U, for the average speed of the molecules in the sample. Now it's going to be interesting to look at what happens when I increase the temperature of this sample. When I increase the temperature of the sample, you're going to see the distribution of molecular speeds shifts, and the new distribution curve is going to look like this. You can see that this distribution is shorter and fatter than the previous one, because the average molecular speed has shifted up, and that new average is approximately here. This is the new U, the new average molecular speed for the sample showing that there's an increase in average kinetic energy. These kinds of distribution curves are called Maxwell-Boltzmann distributions, or Maxwell-Boltzmann curves. These kinds of distribution graphs are helpful to consider when we talk about reaction rates later on.